and that we live in a practical world. In conclusion, I always liked the unicorn when I was growing up. The unicorn is a wonderful creature to behold. I'm pro-unicorn, but I've yet to find one. And I don't believe in spending all of my time searching for the unicorn, thinking that I will find it, because so far I haven't. The same thing with a world in which we have abolished the Fed without a clear idea of what to replace it is a search for the unicorn, which we have yet to find on this earth. Thank you. Thank you, John. You mentioned <clears throat> President Reagan, and one of the most interesting uh, interviews that I had was with President Reagan, and at that time, I remember the discussion we had, one of the things that we were talking about was the tremendous power that the Trilateral Commission and the Council for Foreign Relations have in influencing what goes on in government. And even at that time, they had an, an espoused view of creating a global currency and what they called New World Order. Ironically, uh, after the G20 meeting, the Financial Times heralded that the discussions were so wonderful because headlines, they created a New World Order. So my question is, what do you all think practically is going to happen. Uh, Jim Sinclair says that China already wants a super sovereign reserve currency to replace the dollar, and uh, it's supposed to be a critical part of uh, central banks' reserves. Do you all think that that's the direction we're going? And if not, what do you think is going to happen? I will simply say that uh, the Fed could use some competition. And if it comes from the Chinese communists of all people, that may not be the worst thing in the world. Uh, by the way, I think that we are on the verge of having a, finally a real debate about the Fed because it has been one of the most secretive and least transparent of organizations. Ron Paul's bill to audit the Fed now has a majority of members of Congress in the House behind it. And, As much, as much as I don't want the Chinese running a separate reserve currency, the threat of the Chinese setting up such a thing may actually force members of Congress to ask more probing questions, as Congressman Paul has been wont to do, and question its role. Because if the Fed, through its incompetence and through its bungling, manages to lose the, the status of the dollar being the major reserve currency in the world, uh, there should be some accountability. And even, even obtuse members of Congress may demand that. Well, but I, Yes, go ahead, respond. This, if this were uh, 1985 and we were discussing the future of the Soviet Union. Can you move the mic closer? Oh, this not. This is on. Oh, sorry. If this were 1985 and we were discussing the future of the Soviet Union, I would hope that John Fund or others might say, you know, Ronald Reagan has suggested that maybe the Soviet Union should come to an end. Uh, no. What will happen? Well, nobody would have suggested that uh, it was going to just collapse. Uh, it was going to implode. Uh, John Fund, if someone were to ask him, well, what are we going to replace uh, those systems with? How are we going to replace, what are we going to do with collectivized agriculture? Uh, I believe in unicorns, but after all, uh, what, what is the market going to do? Well, the nature of the market is a certain amount of entrepreneurial discovery. However, there is an enormous body of literature on the free market in banking. He just mentioned Ron Paul. Ron Paul has written about this, uh, about competitive banking. It's not rocket science. There's a great deal of insight about what the free market in banking will do. So the question about where are we going? Well, the more we try to understand the spirit of Ronald Reagan, who thought the solution is for the Soviet Union to unravel, for the Berlin Wall to come down, the more we will appreciate the idea that maybe the solution is to abolish the Fed and then understand a little bit more about the nature of free market so we can appreciate how a free market in banking will work, about which there is a vast and very well-informed literature. I I can't, as someone who covered Ronald Reagan throughout his presidency, I must remind you that the Soviet Union collapsed to the surprise of everyone almost in this room. Oh, yeah. It could have happened in an entirely different way with many casualties and many, much destruction. So while Ronald Reagan wanted the Soviet Union to disappear, he also recognized that it had to be done in such a way that there could be the least possible 
casualties. Quite right. Let's and, the Fed. and I think it's incumbent upon you not just to say the market will provide, but to provide us with a roadmap, a GPS system by which you will trace how we can get from here to there with the least possible damage. You have not done so. You have not carried the burden of proof, and therefore your position fails. It is not enough to say abolish the Fed. You have to say how and you have to say with such ability that you will not inc increase market ins uh, insecurity and you will not create economic conditions in the short term that will make it even harder for us to return to economic growth. Tom? Well, I think part of the, wait, is this working? No. I Grab Gene's no mic. Let's, how about this one still? No. Wow. All right, Gene. Just forget. Uh, <laughs> some kind of racket with the microphones going on here. I'm sure there's a natural explanation. Um, I, it's I the think, Fed. Yeah, Government right. Government control. <laughs> I think um, the reason we probably didn't get into a blueprint is that, I mean, as it is, I could barely get five minutes in. But um, I've actually got right on my blog right now, TomWoods.com, there's a blog entry called How to Return to Gold. And it links to the most important free market economists who have looked at this subject. So uh, Murray Rothbard's book, The Mystery of Banking, which is out in a very nice second edition in 2008, explains exactly what he would do. Now, his plan involves, in part, requiring the Fed to disgorge its gold holdings and then distribute those gold holdings to the commercial banks in proportion to the dollars that they have and then redefine the dollar's value such that it, would, it could absorb the gold and vice versa. Uh, there, are, there have been, shall we say, adjustments to that uh, uh, since. But, so, but that's, that's Rothbard. Henry Hazlitt, who wrote Economics in One Lesson, from which many of us learned economics, uh, I link to him as well. I think probably the best person to go to, though, is a Spanish economist, I think one of the best economists in the world, who has a treatise that if people read it, it would revolutionize the world. And it's called Money, Bank, Credit, and Economic Cycles. And the author is, uh, is Jesus Huerta de Soto. And it is a brilliant treatise. And the last chapter is nearly 100 pages in which he explains how a free, uh, free market system in banking with no government special privileges, no special sugar daddy, but where banking operates according to the same rules as the shellfish industry or anything else and gets no special privileges, how exactly that would, that would work. I understand that. Uh, before you go to another question. Go ahead, go ahead Warren. Um, I, I certainly uh, support greater accountability and transparency of the Fed. And, Can you hold the mic a little closer? And therefore, probably Ron Paul's legislation. I haven't read it, but from what I hear of it, I, I would support it. Uh, your question was about uh, a world currency. Mm -hmm. uh, gold was the last world currency that we had. It had many virtues, worked well for quite a long period of time, but was overly rigid, and as a result of that, ultimately collapsed. Any uh, enduring system uh, and, and the goal of a world currency, I think, is, is worthy, uh, needs to be pragmatic uh, if it's going to survive. What the uh, governor of the People's Bank of China uh, was proposing and referring to was the special drawing right, the SDR of the International Monetary Fund, and I think that's back into the debate and uh, d deserves some serious consideration as uh, not as a replacement, but as a competitor uh, with the dollar and with the euro, which are the two primary reserve currencies in the in the world today. Well, wasn't that dishonesty, though, that the that uh, we went off the gold standard? That is a political decision. I suppose I'm the one who's supposed to answer that. I, okay. I think it, I think it was dishonest to abrogate the gold clause and that uh, and and thereby null and void contracts that people had entered into. That's a different proposition from going off the gold standard as the basis or as the peg to which the dollar is is fixed. Uh, and that's a a long, complicated topic yeah. that you're well, not going to give me the time for. It, it, from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, it, isn't it being proposed that just the opposite of, of the Fed having less powers, that the, the government is proposing that the Fed will have the authority to bypass Congress and bail out virtually any entity that deems to pose a systemic risk? And I understand that there are like 500 banks that are on the list